Hello and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to be taking a look at a puzzle by Doug H, or Dag H, and I think it's Dag H's first appearance on Cracking the Cryptic, so a debut puzzle with possibly the greatest name for a Sudoku ever. This is called Oh the Pelican, and I have no clue what this means. Um, if I was solving a cryptic crossword clue, and I saw the phrase, oh, the pelican, I would instantly think we must be looking at some sort of anagram. But I can't think of an anagram of, oh, the pelican. Although it is sort of nagging away that there is some word or words that I should be able to extract from it. Yes. In the place or it's almost in the place of, I think there's no F though. Um, no, I don't know. So somebody will have to explain why this is called Oh the Pelican. There, there isn't a pelican in the grid, I don't think. And if there was a pelican, why wouldn't it just be called the pelican? Why is it Oh the Pelican? These things are meant to baffle us. Um, anyway, it's a normal arrow Sudoku today. And it's been recommended to us by none other than Christoph Seeliger. And Christoph Seeliger is one of the world's best constructors and solvers of puzzles. And I trust Christoph implicitly. So I've no doubt we're in for an absolute treat. And I've, I looked on Logic Masters Germany, actually. This has just two stars out of five for difficulty, um, which you make of that what you will. But it does suggest we ought to be able to solve it with something approaching alacrity. Um, we shall see. Uh, now, what do I need to mention today? Uh, firstly, I need to say congratulations to Jeremy and uh, Horseway, who have, um, well, I think today is your two year anniversary of your relationship. Um, and Horseway, you, um, you wrote to us to tell us this and said that Jeremy basically watches the channel every night. And I think Jeremy is a maths professor. I might be wrong about that, but I think he's a maths professor. And, um, uh, yeah, this is marvellous. We are followed by so many mathematicians and e yeah, even maths professors. It really is. Um, it's, it's cool. <laughs> it gives me a bit of imposter syndrome, to be honest. It is very daunting um, to think that I'm doing my mental arithmetic in front, in front of such powers. Um, but anyway, uh, the two of you, we hope you have a brilliant day today with, of course, I think anniversaries. You can celebrate those with cake. So it seems appropriate that you should have lots of cake. Um, other than that, the only other thing to mention is that we're only a few days away from the start of June. And on the 1st of June, we have these new two new competitions coming up on Patreon, both around packs of Japanese sum Sudoku puzzles. I'm a big fan of Japanese sum Sudoku because, of course, if you solve the puzzle correctly, you get picture, you get a picture in the grid. And these packs have been created by Panthera, The Asylum and Grockles. So we basically know the puzzles are going to be awesome. And um, yeah, we're looking forward to that one. So uh, make sure you uh, you put some time aside because certainly the, the doctoral pack, the, the harder pack, is going to take a very, very long time to finish. Anyway, that's all coming on the 1st of June. Now, let us read the rules of O oh, the Pelican. <laughs> Dag H's puzzle. They they are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits along an arrow must sum to the digit in that arrow's circle. So what that tells us is that those three digits there add up to that. So if this was one, two, and three, that would have to be a six. And that would be how that works. Um, in fact, I've just thought of a reason that can't be a six, which is quite interesting. Anyway, we shall get to that when we're solving it. So do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And it does look like um, the setter has built this sort of symmetrical pattern in here. Is this meant to look like a pelican? I don't understand. I'm really sorry. Um, but what I just noticed then, well, I noticed two things. The first is that because this circle and this circle, these are symmetrical, obviously, um, is adding these three digits up. And these three digits all have to be different. This digit is at least a six, and this digit is at least a six. So let's start there. But the thing I noticed when I tried to put a six in here is actually this can't be a six, because six has only got one way of making up its values in three cells. If this is six, this has to be one, two, three, triple. But so does this. And that look is going to give us a problem straight away in row seven. We're going to have 
four cells which can only be selected from three different digits. That will necessitate a repeated digit and will break the rules of Sudoku. So we mustn't do that. And this is not a six. And neither is this. And in fact, it's not a seven either. Because if it was a seven, we'd have exactly the same problem, just with one, two, and four instead. So that won't work either. So in fact, these digits, therefore, which obviously have to be different because they're in the same box and column, are an eight, nine pair. And that means, that means Sudoku. <laughs> it's very rare I get to do Sudoku early on in a puzzle now, but look. Those sixes are pushing a six into one of two places in box five and one of three places in box two. And OK, um, so whichever one of these is eight, yeah, let's just look at that. If, if this was eight, then I can see some things that are going to happen. <laughs> Those things are that because we'll have to, because eight in three cells always involves a one, it's either one, two, five, or one, three, four, you, you'd get that sort of configuration of ones. And that would mean that the one in the top row would be in one of those three cells, which would put mild pressure on this arrow. But of course, the eight could be down here, in which case the mild pressure would resort to this arrow. So there's something going on with eight. Now, oh, the other thing that occurs to me, though, is that, yeah, so let's imagine this was eight. And let's imagine this was the one, two, five version of making eight. This would, couldn't be the one, two, five version of making eight, because then we'd get the problem in row three again. So it would have to be the one, three, four version of making eight. So whichever one of these is eight has sort of both its versions on its arrow. And whichever one of these is nine, nine is a bit more flexible because nine, nine can be two, three, four, one, two, six, or one, three, five. So there's something going on there. I am just trying to work out what it is. I was actually thinking, is it Sudoku on these digits? Those digits there have to find homes in these boxes. And the only thing, well, not the only thing, but one of the things I know about eights and nines is that they cannot go on a three cell arrow. Because if we put the purple digit on here, whatever it is, whether it's eight or nine, obviously this cell is then, we'd have to put double zero with it in order to keep it to the same value. So the purple, well, these two digits are in two of those three cells. That's not, ah, that's really annoying because actually you could put the eight here and the nine here. So I don't, th oh, ah, no, so look, it's better down here. This given six is, this is obviously what this is doing. Where do these two digits go in this box? They must go in those two cells because they can't go here. So now, oh, this is lovely, isn't it? That's absolutely beautiful. Right, so now I don't know what this digit is, except I now do. Because by Sudoku, where does this specific digit, and we don't know which one of these it is, but we know it's one of these, where does this digit go in this box? It can't go on the arrow, so it must go on this arrow, and therefore, it cannot be a nine and must be an eight. So that's an eight, that's an eight. Now this is a nine, which means these are effectively the two purple digits here. And this is a one, good grief. So this is a nine. And that is presumably going to lead to just a second, let's work it out. Um, hmm. That's weird in the sense that it's really beautiful, but it just seems to then die because we've got, we've got such little information in the wings of the puzzle. Uh, hang on, what am I missing here? Oh yes, I know what I'm missing. Look, this one is very important, isn't it? Because now what are those three digits? 
Well, the minimum they could be is two, three, and four, and two, three, and four add up to, you've guessed it, nine. So nine and eight go into the grid. These cells are now uh, five, sixes, and sevens, with that not being a six. So this, this is an eight now, so we know that we've got to have ones on both arrows and a one down here. So the pressure is being exerted on this circle which now has to be, if this was a two, three pair, this would be at least a five, but it can't be an eight. Um, now, and we, ah, ah, yeah, okay. And we can now do the trick with, can we have, can we have the same composition again? If this was two, three, four, we'd have too many two, three, fours in row three. So this is either 126 or 135, and it has a one in it. This is so beautiful. So now one aligns in columns two and three, and we should ask where one goes in column one. Well, it's not there, it's not there. So it's one of those. And now we will ask the question, um, Oh, the pelican. No, we won't ask that question. It's not really a question. It's more of an exclamation. Like, bazinga. <laughs> Which is my new favourite word, actually. I've got totally addicted to the uh, Big Bang Theory. Um, and it is just wonderful. Sheldon Cooper must be one of the great comic characters in the history of sitcoms and um, I'm stuck. Come on, stop thinking about television and solve the puzzle. We shall argue that. Three, four. Right, okay, that's interesting. This digit is interesting, isn't it? Because there must be uh, a digit from two, three, and four on this arrow. It's either one, two, five, or one, three. Oh, that's it. In fact, that's really clever. Right, Dag H, that's really clever. Sorry, I should have spotted that instantly and I failed to understand it. But, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Right, can this be one, three, four? Well, no, it can't because there would be two common digits between these little strings. And that will give us a problem. I think we might be able to lose the purple now. Because if there were two common digits, you'd have to put them in there, and there is only space for one. So this, in fact, has to be one, um, one, two, five, which means the common digit is two, which goes here. Uh, so, so now we know that this eight, in order for us not to have a problem in row seven with too many ones, twos, and fives, this. That's got to be one, three, four. And now we ask ourselves, oh, I see. No, what we do is we say we know what these digits are now by the power of Sudoku. These are three, four, and seven which means that there's no seven up here, which means that that is a seven, which means this is a five, six pair. Aha, uh -huh. and now we asked about this circle, which it cannot be a three or a four because a domino adding to three or four requires a one, which is not available to it. So that's seven. This is lovely. Right now we've got a three, four pair here and a three, four pair in two of those three cells. So three and four in this row have to be down here along with the digit one. So that's a one, three, four triple, which means these are, well, it means this domino is two, five. That's the only way of making seven if we can't use three, four or one, six. And that digit in the corner is not a singing digit, it's an eight. Okay, so that's an eight. Oh, that's lovely. This, this puzzle flows like you wouldn't believe. That's eight there, because you can't put eight on a three cell arrow. You can't put eight on even a two cell arrow if it's got, if it's a, its partner is a two. So eight's placed here. 
So eights in one of these two cells by Sudoku, eights in one of these three cells by Sudoku, and eights in one of those three cells by Sudoku. And these digits are six, seven, and nine. And that is important because that cells a nine by Sudoku again. This nine has to go in that domino because it can't go on the arrow. So that knocks the nine out of these, creates a six, seven pair, plonks a nine into this cell. Nine comes over here, take nine out of this cell. So this domino is adding up. Oh, whoa, have we broken this? I'm just wondering what's possible here, given that one, three and four are not available on this arrow. So it must have a two on it. Because if it doesn't, it's a 5-6 arrow, and that will definitely add up to more than 5-6 or 7. Um, so 2 th oh, it's not 2-3, so that's not 5. It's not 2-4, because that the 4 is down here, so it must be 2-5, I think. That's all that seems to be left. So that's 2-5, that's 7, that's 7, that's 6. Let's get rid of the 2 from here. We now know these squares are... 6, 8, and 9 by Sudoku. That's not able to be 6. Uh, we've got a 1, 3, 4 triple here. So these can't be 1. So this is 1. 1 is in one of those three cells, and it can't be in the circle. Um, this one is knocking itself out of there, look. And... We can probably do more, but I can't see how. Okay. Now, so where do we look for our next deduction? Nine. Where does nine go in box four? That's an interesting question, given this nine domino here. It's not there, it's not there, it's not there, and it can't go on the arrow, so it goes there. So now there's an 8-9 pair in box 6. And and now, well, okay, now I can see something quite clever. Not by me, I hasten to add, by Dag H. Look, where does 1 go in this row? Now 1 can never go in the circle of a of an arrow unless that arrow is one cell long. So those are all ruled out. So that means it's either here, but it doesn't seem, yes, it can't be here. We've pencil marked the ones here because of these ones. So that's not a one and this is a one. That means these two digits are consecutive with each other because the, their difference is one. So that we can imagine a sort of white cropkey dot right there. So that means this is one even and one odd number. Um, and we're probably overcomplicating this. I can't see what that means. Although six by Sudoku is in one of those two cells. So if that was a six, that would have to be a seven. Ah, right. Well, well, there's something here that's to do with sevens. Seven can't go there because this can't be a nine. So seven in box four has to be in one of those three cells, which means seven in this box is in one of those three. Now it can't go on a three cell arrow, so it must go there. So that's a seven. There's a seven down here. And we can, that's, uh, so does that mean, yeah, okay, so how can this be 6 now? If that's 6, we've got to put 7 in one of these two positions. Now, if 7's there, this has to be 8, which it can't be. And if 7's there, we need to reuse the 6. We'd have to have two 6's in the box. So that's not 7. Sorry, that's not 6. This is 6, and that is 7 by the power of maths. 6 goes here. And now in this row, the remain, ah, this is lovely, okay. So the remaining digits are three, four, and five, and we need uh, two of these to have 
have a difference of two. Well, that must be three and five, therefore. So that's got to be the four, which means this is a one, three pair. This is, um, this, oh, okay. No, maybe that's not, oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> there I was. I, I mean, I was trying to do Sudoku. I was trying to do Sudoku and you all criticize me sometimes for not doing enough Sudoku. But really, I should have just been doing simple mathematics. Oh my goodness me, that's so embarrassing. Right, so this is four, this is one, this is three, this is three, this is four. And now we can, oh, that's a one by the power of Sudoku. These digits here can't be, can't be three, five because of the three. So they must be two, six. Um, which is well that means there's a six up there what's Maverick doing flying past in the middle of the night I do not know but this is now a five this is two um, I suppose his new film opens tomorrow so he's probably very excited about that four five into those two cells by Sudoku so this is two four and five which we can't do anything about. This is something else altogether. Um, let me just have a stare at this because we must, it feels like we've almost cracked this, doesn't it? We've got, what have we got to put in box five? One, three, and seven. Yeah, okay, well, so seven goes here. This is a one or a three. So seven is in one of those, ah, no, seven is in one of those two cells. And that's not a seven by Sudoku. One, ah, there we go. Look, one is on this, uh, on this arrow. It can't go in the circle because we can't put one and zero. This is not binary. This is Sudoku. So we've got to put a one here. Now that must presumably limit. Yeah, well that, that's going to be interesting for nine now. Where does nine go in box three? because it's not there and it can't be here anymore because this would have to be one eight, which it can't be. So nine, so there's a seven, eight, nine triple in this row, which does absolutely diddly squat. I don't believe it. Well, no, actually that's maligning it unfairly. This can't be nine. So that does place a nine in box one. And now we need threes, fours and fives to complete this box, which I can't see how to do. So what is this cell then? This is not seven, eight or nine. If it was, it can't be six. Actually, it can't be six either. So and it must be at least three. So it's three, four or five. And hmm. so if it's three, this is a one, two pair. Is that is that ruled out by something? Actually, it is. Actually, it is. Look, look at where twos go in box one and box two. The two in, well, they'll think about where two goes in the in, in row one. It has to be up there. So that can't be a three. So this could be four with a one three pair. Is that broken? Is that breaking anything? Not immediately, obviously. Or it's five with a one four pair which also might be possible. Uh, that would cause this to be a five and this to be a five and this to be a four. That would do quite a lot of damage actually. Um, that cell's not a four, I've just noticed. Oh, that, that cell's known. There's a one, three pair looking at that. That's a two. Okay. So this is a two, this is a five. Aha, aha, right. Now look at this row again. That can't be four anymore because if that's four, what do we put on the arrow? One, three, and this cell would be broken. So that's five. This is one, four, which is what I was hoping for. Now that's three, that's four. Uh, surely this is, yeah, this is resolved. That's five, that's six, that's six, that's two. And now there's something down here. Yeah, that becomes five, that becomes two five gets put here 
by Sudoku. So now this is four and this can't be, look at that, this can't be nine because it would have to be a four, five and it can't be. So that's eight, that's three, that's three, that's one, that's one. This is something. Uh, not the most descriptive thing I've ever said in my life, but that's a two and that's a five by Sudoku. That's a five by Sudoku. This is a four by Sudoku, a three by Sudoku. These are some things, um, twos, threes and sixes. Oh, uh, that, so that's a three and that's three in the corner. <laughs> that's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. Um, this is a two, six pair, which may not be resolved. And this is not an eight. This is not a seven. Have we, I think we've done everything now. So it should just be, yeah, it's Sudoku, isn't it? That's a two, that's a four, that's a two, that's a six. Which means that this is not, so the six in this, this row goes here. This is an eight, nine pair. The eight here is quite useful actually. Could have done that before, but didn't see it. Eight, nine go in like that, that's seven. This is eight, that's nine. That square's a seven. This is a one. That's a three, that's a four, that's a four, that's a one. And we are, I think, yay, finished. <laughs> oh, the pelican has been um, completed. And that's marvelous. And I only wish I understood it more. <laughs> Um, Dag H, take a bow on your debut because that was really gorgeous. I really thought that the this simple idea, and it is it is quite a simple idea around these cells, and us having to make sure that we couldn't have a number in these circles that only had one way of making its total. So that sort of gave us this eight nine pair, and then and then bizarrely we actually had to do a bit of Sudoku very early to sort of, and down here, this given six was massive because it allowed us to know that this digit was interesting. That gave us that digit, which prompted all, all of the eights and nines to fall. So loved it. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I hope you enjoyed the puzzle. I do enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.